So, so in terms of, say, the introverts, and it's funny because I was looking at uh, in your book and you said that you're uh, an outgoing introvert. Is that is that correct? Right. Yeah. Right. And, and it's funny, I'm, I'm very similar to that as well, because people think I'm an extrovert, but I would say I'm more of an introvert, but an outgoing introvert. So say for you know introverts, outgoing introverts like ourselves, Friedrika, or even non outgoing introverts, how can they survive or thrive in the workplace? Any thoughts on that? Well, I think, first of all, it's important to communicate that to the people around you and to then really work in line with your neurosignature and not against it. You know, I, I've seen so many tips and articles with like, if you're an introvert, here's how you can learn to network. I don't want to network. OK, <laughs> give me a break. Like, I don't I don't want to learn it. I want to be successful without networking. Is that possible? I think it is. OK, well, you, so, you've done it. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I don't go to any uh, dinners. I never network. I, I just wow, if I get an invitation, that's the quickest thing that, you know, I get burned up in a fire in my home. So <laughs> I really don't want to go. So I think rather than telling people how to fit in, we should create more diversity. So, for example, for me as a speaker, it's challenging to travel. It's challenging to have these after speech dinners that I don't want to go to necessarily. But I love delivering my speeches. I love my work. I love connecting with people. Um, it's more I don't like the small talk, the shallow small talk. So I don't do it, period. Like, why do I have to do it? Just because I'm the speaker doesn't mean that sitting next to me at dinner is so much fun. People think it would be fun, but then they may, will realize it's not. Oh, Friedrich, I'm, I'm having I'm having the best time. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> we are not having dinner. Uh, you know, I just want to enjoy my food. Um, so I think it's about understanding where you add value and to really um, see where your strengths are. For me, I do a lot of work virtually. That's amazing for me. I love it. I'm here alone in my studio, and yet I get to connect to a lot of people. I I, I like being connected to people, but I don't necessarily you know, want to sit next to them in the airplane and chat for an hour. Yeah. So I, I skip that part. So I think it's about identifying your strength and your weaknesses and to shape your work environment so it fits you rather than always having to adapt. We know that adaptation and having to fit in drains our cognitive resources. And so many times, going back to the example we had in the beginning with the handshake, what that was, was that they were training as women to be more assertive and more confident and like leaning in. And so we had to shake hands and be strong and, and speak in a lower voice. So they were actually training us <laughs> to speak in a low voice and not to be, not to smile, to give commands. And to me, I mean, this works for sure. But do I want to do that? Like, do I want to sit in a meeting and think, oh, okay, I need to lower my voice. Like, do I want to waste my cognitive resources on changing my natural behavior? I don't think so. So it goes back to the same principle. I think don't change the people, change the workplace. There's a place for everyone. The diversity we have in our brains is there for a reason. It's good that we're different. If everybody was an extrovert, there would be no books written. There would be no scientists making breakthrough discoveries well maybe some of them but you know i'm just saying there are different traits and different strengths associated with act introversion that we wouldn't benefit from if everybody was just outgoing and social and a butterfly 